the system that is supposed to protect our democracy didn't work the way it was supposed to. That was a clip from an excerpt from this documentary, All In, The Fight for Democracy. is in select theaters now, but it's premiering on Amazon Prime tomorrow. And that voice you heard was the voice of the people, Heather B. This woman is a best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, nonprofit CEO, political leader. As the Democratic nominee of governor of Georgia, she got more votes than any other person in the history of Georgia. So why isn't she the governor? That's why we need to talk about voter suppression. She's on the line with us right now. Give a round of applause for Stacey Abrams, ladies and gentlemen. Stacey! Stacey Abrams! Thank you. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Sway, I that sounds exciting. Got an intro like that. You so <laughs> you know, well, I gotta, I gotta celebrate. I gotta celebrate mm-hmm. Stacy's journey. Stacy been doing this for a long time. She was marching mm-hmm. when the Rodney King ver- verdict came out, and that was back in 1992 or some. Mm-hmm. And so she has been standing up for the people since then. And this is such an important topic. And I know you only have so much time to talk about it. Uh, and we want to talk about uh, voter suppression. But first, tell us about the documentary um, that's premiering tomorrow. Why was it made and what will we find in it? Thank you both so much for having me. The Absolutely. reason for making the documentary on the 2018 election, but my belief is when you focus on a politician, you ignore the real tragedy, which is that voters had their rights stolen from them. And so my mission mm-hmm. was to really tell the story of voters to talk about the arc of history, how voter suppression has been a part of our country since its beginning, how it impacted our past, how it affects our present, and how if we can defeat it, we can change our future. And so I I worked with two amazing filmmakers, Liz Garbus and Lisa Cortez, and they put together this amazing film, All In, The Fight for Democracy. You know, when you um, and this is great, I've seen the trailer and, I, and I've seen some of the clips and it's very informative. I read about the documentary um, and a lot of people still don't believe that there's voter suppression, you know, uh, uh, they, they they don't they don't even recognize it when it happens. You know, it might be misinformation that's circulating around a college campus. College students are being targeted right now, too, for voter suppression. It might be misinformation mm-hmm. where people are telling you. Uh, if you got a parking ticket or if you owe money uh, to the courts or you go to go, go to vote, you're going to get thrown in jail. It's so many tactics that are being used for voter suppression. Stacey Abrams, can you tell us some of the latest tactics uh, that you've seen? And also, how is it that we eradicate these tactics? So the first way is to understand what constitutes voter suppression. Anytime people with authority try to prevent you or discourage you from casting your ballot if you are eligible, and that's voter suppression. It doesn't really matter who they are. It's okay to try to get you to vote for one candidate versus the other. When they try to take your power of the right to vote away from you, that's voter suppression. And it has three forms. Mm. Are they doing something that impacts your ability to register or stay on the rolls? Number two, is there any impediment to your ability to cast your ballot? And number three, can you be sure your ballot got counted? And what we know is that right now, the fight that's most visible is around vote by mail. We have seen lots of challenges across the country. And the Republicans, have said, let's be clear, right now, Republicans are the architects of voter suppression. If we go back to the 20th century, it was largely Democrats. If you go back you know, to the 18th and 17th century, you know, it, it's always 19th and 18th centuries. It was a way that was different parties. But it's always been political parties who've been the main purveyors of voter suppression. And so the last thing I'll say is this. If you are being told you can't vote by mail and there are lawsuits that are being put in place, not to say that you're not eligible, but to limit your access, that's voter suppression. If you're on a college campus, like what's just happened in Georgia, where they're trying to take early voting locations off of campus, take voting precincts off of campus, if you've got to be there, you should be able to vote where you are. And mm. black voters in particular face the most aggressive longitudinal version of voter suppression in American history. They've been after us since the beginning, and that's why we have to fight back. Yeah, you know, um, I was reading this story um, about college students who are being told they can only vote on their home in their home districts versus their school districts. 
unless they go through all sorts of hoops, including getting certain types of ID, which students don't have and don't have time to get and discouraging them. So you decide not to vote. You got to be on the lookout for all of these uh, various tactics. Uh, Stacy, this is Heather B. Uh, she's on the show as well. You can say hi, hi to Stacey. Uh, Stacey. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. I wanted to. Um, hi, how are you? Ask- Hi, I'm great. I wanted to ask you sort of a a personal question about persevering and moving on and maybe disappointment. I live in New Jersey, so I didn't I, I didn't have opportunity. I couldn't vote for Georgia, but I was just personally disappointed when I saw how many people were supporting you, how many people were voting for you, how many people were championing you and then to hear the results. It just was sort of a huge letdown for me. Personally, where did you find the strength, the faith, whatever it is that that, that you were able to just pick yourself up? up and just keep moving on and marching forward. I I am the great, great, great granddaughter of slaves. I am the great, great granddaughter of sharecroppers. I'm the granddaughter of domestic workers. I'm the granddaughter of uh, cooks who worked in a university for 40 years. And for half Mm -hmm. of that time, their children were not legally eligible to attend that college. My parents are first generation college students. And in my generation, I became the first black woman in American history to be the nominee for governor for a major party. Mm -hmm. My perseverance comes from knowing all of the work that went into making me so. And my responsibility is to recognize that while I was fighting for this job, it wasn't for the title. It was for Mm -hmm. the ability to do the work. And, you know, I took 10 days off. I was sad, angry, mad, went through all the stages of grief. (laughs) Really enjoyed anger. Mm -hmm. But my <laughs> fundamental responsibility was to remember what my parents taught me, which is that if you see a problem, your job is to fix it. And I don't have the luxury of wallowing in my own grief when I know that hundreds of thousands of Georgians and millions of Americans are risking losing their fundamental right to vote because we didn't talk about it, because we didn't fight against it. And so for me, it was you know not getting the job didn't exempt me from the work. I got to be sad, and then I had to get back to work. Yeah. Had to get right back to work. Thank Stacey you. Abrams is with us uh, right now, and we're also celebrating uh, All In, A Fight for Democracy, which will be on Amazon Prime tomorrow. It's an interesting documentary. It tells a lot of great stories. Uh, you guys even have a campaign, All In, for voting, where people can find out information on where to vote, uh, where they can go, the rules, all of these things. Correct, Stacey? Correct. And to your point about college students, that's the kind of thing that we want to we want people to be aware of. If you go to our website, allinforvoting.com, you can find out information about your rights, what the rules are in your state, because the reality is it changes state to state. If you go to college in Texas, you can use your gun license, but not your, your student ID. But if you go to college in New York, you can use your student ID. So we really want people to use this website to find out the rules where you live. Voter suppression is most effective when it convinces us that it's our fault, that I should have known, I should have done. It's not on us. This is about Mm -hmm. a system that's been designed in the 21st century to use administrative rules and bureaucratic barriers to convince us that it's not worth fighting or that fighting won't work. And I'm here to tell you fighting does work. Fighting does work. Absolutely. Stacey Abrams is here. Uh, we also got Mike Muse joining us. Good morning, Mike Muse. How you doing? Good morning, Mike. Hey, good hey, morning. Mike. How's everyone doing? Good morning, Stacey. Everyone's great. Tracy, you want to jump in real quick? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Hey, Mike, Stacy, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really would just love to hear your thoughts on the first 100 days. Biden, he is our next president. What do you think should be his number one priority to get done in those first 100 days? I think there are going to be three things that have to happen at the same time. One is that we've got to begin working on really addressing this pandemic. Unfortunately, it's been every American for his or herself uh, because we have not had real leadership at the top and it's disproportionately affecting black and brown folks. We found out today that if you're African-American, Latino or Asian, that you are twice as likely or one and a half times more likely to lose your health insurance. So we need that focus to be immediate and we need the resources that the federal government controls to actually flow to the people who paid that money in for such a time as this. Number two, we need to take action on democracy. H.R. 1 was the first bill passed under this current uh, uh, um, legislative session under Nancy Pelosi, 
It fixes so many of the broken pieces of our democracy. And then the John Lewis uh, Act, the John Lewis Voter, Voter, Voting Rights Advancement Act, H.R. 4, those two bills need to move immediately and be passed. And we need to fix the census. Uh, we know that the Trump administration is trying to erase black and brown and poor communities from the census. They are intentionally trying to block us from being seen. And that means they're trying to block us from having the economic and political power. We've got to act this year to make certain that the census is accurate. And we've got to act next year to make certain that our economic and political power is preserved. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mike, Mike News, you want to jump in? Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, congratulations on the documentary and all the work that you have been doing and raising consciousness. Uh, I salute to you for uh, the New Georgia Project. I remember working with you fundraising to make sure that many black people in Georgia was registered, particularly in the rural areas. And I believe people forget about the rural aspect of that. Can you talk to a little bit about the aspect of like rural blacks and the things that they need to be advocated for? Because I believe that when we do identity politics, we always talk about you know, the major cities, the suburban cities or the urban cities that's black, right? And then when we say rural, it equates white. Um, but there are blacks who make up the rural South. I was wondering if you just talk to a little bit about that um, and how we can begin to bring that more into the conversation for better policy advocation. Absolutely. I, I grew up in Mississippi. I grew up technically in the city, but my family is from all over the state. And most of Mississippi is rural. Most of the state would be constituted as rural, and nearly half the state is black. I think it's in the mid-40s right now. Georgia, a third of rural populations are black. And across the South, there are 45,000 black farmers in America. 90% of them are in the South. And I, mm. you know, there are very few urban farms. So what we have to recognize is that when we talk about rural, we are talking about black and brown communities, black folks in particular, because that's where we're from, and that's often what we're returning to. But because of the economic impediments that are embedded in our progress or that impede our progress, we often do focus so much on the urban areas. We leave behind those who help build and make our our state strong in Georgia, in Mississippi, in Alabama, in North Florida, in Louisiana. It is black communities that are helping to bolster and keep these communities alive. And yet they're often left behind because of the lack of access to health care. Medicaid expansion, Louisiana's gotten it right, but for the rest of the Deep South, Medicaid expansion could cover millions of black folks who do not have access to health care. And the refusal to expand Medicaid means that when you hear that rural hospitals are shutting down, that means hospitals where black folks need to go to get their medicine, need to go to get treatment, those hospitals are shutting down. And so, yes, for me, identity politics means understanding the multi-strand identity. It's not just about being black. It's about where you are, what you have access to, and whether you are included or excluded in opportunity. And so my focus when I ran for governor, my focus when I was a state legislator, has always been on making sure we lift up the needs of rural African Americans. I have another organization called the Southern Economic Advancement Project, and we've launched a program called South Strong that looks at how do we restore the South. And that means thinking about this through a racial lens that understands that the disproportionate harms we talk about are visited on rural blacks more than anyone else and we have to be ready to help have to be ready to redeem stacy abrams oh Oh, go ahead mike go go ahead real quick go ahead no you got it okay uh stacy i know you have to go to this uh i know you're doing a lot of interviews but we have to have you come back on the show so we can have more time to talk but uh i just want to let you know i appreciate what you do I appreciate your work. I've been a, a fan of what you've do, done for, for years. I want to remind people all in, the fight for democracy is in theaters now and premiere in select theaters, but premiering on Amazon Prime tomorrow. You can also go to allinforvoting.com. And in closing, is there anything you want to say to our audience? The election is coming and, and about the urgency and the importance of this election. You still got people who say they're not going to vote. I know it must be frustrating mm. to you because it's frustrating to me. So to those people who say we're not going to vote, it doesn't matter. It's the lesser of two evils. All of these reasons for not voting. Uh, what would you say to them? Number one, there is no less evil. You've got evil and then you've got good. And we need the good. Mm. We need people who see us, who are willing to invest in us. And as someone who's supporting Joe Biden, I can tell you he has a plan 
to help us. And Donald Trump has shown us very clearly he does not. But I, I, I push back on people who we have to be honest about what voting accomplishes. Voting isn't magic. It is not going to change the world the day you vote. Voting is part of a process. If you think about sports, if you think about music, any art, you don't expect someone to be able to wake up and get everything they want. They've got to practice. They've got to compete. They've got to keep coming back again and again. And that's what voting is. We've got to protest in the street, protest at the ballot box, and then protest in the halls of power because the progress we make comes from our voices being lifted. So we've got to make a plan to vote, and we've got to make that plan to vote not just for now but for our future. And the other piece is while we win this election, we cannot lose the future. We need people to complete the 2020 census. They are trying to erase us, and if they do, we will lose billions of dollars in COVID recovery. We will lose political power. This country will look whiter and more Republican than it really is. And so I need you to go to my2020census.gov or dial 844-330-2020 to complete the census. It's 10 minutes that will change the next 10 years. And look, if you've got a cell phone or a utility bill, they can already find you. Fill out the census so you can get your money. It's confidential, but it changes the future. Stacey Abrams, round of applause for Stacey Abrams. And any information you need you. in and around voting, go to allinforvoting.com. Stacey, stay the course. We'll talk with you soon, okay? Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. That was great. Stacey Abrams. Here you go, black.